transportation that's possibly being made by Great Wall Motors, which is an EV maker, or primarily an EV maker from China. Uh, I think I missed the first two presentations, but uh, you can see there's some vehicles under wraps. I'm gonna walk around the auto show while I'm here. And uh, you can see there's a guy on stage. I think he's talking in Thai. There's actually, as far as I can tell, this is a, a presentation for media. There's no one actually here. Uh, there's a bunch of people working around it. There is a very active show. There's a whole bunch. There's a huge Audi section. I believe Tesla is not here. I'm um, sorry. Just, just to reintroduce what's going on. This is the Bangkok Auto Show, and there's a whole bunch going on here. I'm standing at the Great Wall Motors. I, I think this is Great Wall Motors. It's on the schedule. On the schedule, it says Great Wall Motors, although it says MG over here. So maybe I got it wrong. Um, but MG also, I believe, makes some electric vehicles. So I'm going to be going around the. Uh, I'm not going to talk about Tesla. Say Tesla, as far as I know, is not present at the auto show. But uh, I'm going to go around and show you some of what's here. See if we can find some EVs. I know over in this direction, on the other side of that thing, is Zeker which I believe is an EV maker. In this direction, I see BYD. Where's BYD? BYD's right here. Um, there's Kia. Kia's right next to me. Kia has some EVs. Audi doesn't have a lot in the EV world, but Audi's here. Um, you can see MG in the background. I'm just, but anyway, I'm gonna walk around and we'll see what we see. So Audi has a big presence, I'll show you. Right here, Audi has a big presence. I'm in the middle of like traffic, so, uh, but Audi has a big presence. Let's uh, switch the camera around. So you see, these are, as far as I can tell, largely non-electric vehicles. I don't know if we're gonna see if they have any EVs on display. Cube 8 Sportback e-tron. So this, this looks like it's an EV. It's probably a very expensive EV, but, uh, Looks pretty nice. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Audi. I had had an Audi A4 Avant when I was younger. My parents had e Audis before that. E-Tron GT. Looks pretty nice. Two electric motors, 530 horsepower, 270 kilowatt charge capacity, DC, 4.1 seconds, zero to 100 kilometers. Zero to 100 is like zero to 62 miles per hour. Retail price, 7.25 million baht. That's, uh, it's 36 baht to the dollar, so you can do your own math on that. I think that's, uh, is that $500,000? Motor show price is down to only $400,000. I, I might have my numbers wrong there. Um, so, yeah, there, you know, you, you can see there's some EV presence, but I would say that the Audi display is not dominated by EVs. Maserati's here, but I don't think Maserati... My guess is they're not featuring EVs. I don't see any sense. Oh, Xpeng. Oh, this is cool. This is cool. Xpeng is right here. Xpeng is a Chinese automaker. Um, she's standing in front of the Xpeng sign, but uh, I think this is an Xpeng supercharger. And oh, look, look at these doors. That's pretty hot. I don't know if it's practical or inexpensive. Let's look inside. This is the inside of an Xpeng. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right. Is it Expo? Uh, the Expo P7i. It's like the rear door is open normal, but the front door is open funky. That is a pretty cool looking car. I'll give him credit, but you're good. You're good. That is a pretty cool looking car. The Expo P7i, pretty cool looking car. This is the Expo G9. Uh, looks like a luxury SUV. A lot of activity going on. They have a nice little lounge area here, too. x -Pung G9. Let's see if I can open the door. Oh, yeah, baby. So, you can see, I think it's a similar interior of the screen layout. Looks like really nice, cushy seats. Uh, you can see the stereo system in the door. Uh, you know, I can't, 
I can't judge the the quality, but I'm you know looks good to me. This is a nice color. I saw a really cool Model Y yesterday with like what must be like sort of like an opal white wrap. But uh, is this the thing? This looks a little smaller. G6. And then is this still Xpeng or is this something else? This is another Xpeng G6, so that's its same car in orange and white and gray. Oh, what's this? Okay, this looks way cool. Oh, the pod car might be in trouble. Look at this mother. Oh my God, this is beautiful. This is spectacular. I'm sure this will never be. Oh, oh, it's got fucking, it's got, this is a flying car. Oh my God, this is amazing. Look at this. This is absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. This is unbelievable. Look at this thing. Oh my God. Now that, that is a demo. I'm sure, this, I, I highly doubt this will ever make it to production, but holy cow, that's cool. It's just like this really cool fucking thing. Excuse my French. Um, so we've got here. Hyundai has the I series. I see an Ionic 6 over here. Let's go check out the Ionic 6. I think this is an, is this an Ionic 5? Maybe this is an Ionic 6. So we have the Hyundai Ionic 6. I don't know if I've read about the Ionic 6 before. I know about the Ionic 5. I guess this is a presentation over here. Great Wall Motors is... Um, I don't know if you guys can hear that. Great Wall Motors is, is currently, I think, the only EV manufacturer in Thailand. And again, we're at the Bangkok Auto Show. So, uh, the vehicle that you see right here, the Aura Good Cat, is the first, to my knowledge, the first EV that's manufactured in Thailand. And Thailand is a large car market. This is where all the press is, okay? So, I think I'm gonna skip over this because the guy's speaking in Thai and it's hard to get close. So we'll go back to Hyundai. We'll see what else Hyundai has to offer. So, again, this is the... I think these are gas Hyundais. And then you've got the Ionic 6 here. Let's see if we can get a look pretty sure I can open the door. Oh, the driver's side is on this side. This is Thailand, the driver's side. What am I thinking? So, you see the interior? I don't know, it looks like a car. I kind of like this, uh, there's like a space underneath the, the bar there. That's kind of cool looking. So this is the Ionic 6. Check the back seat. I didn't check the back seat on the other one. So. It's kind of roomy, but they got the seat pushed forward on the on the passenger side. Let's see what else we have for Hyundai. I don't know if that's oh, this is the Ionic Five, so this is the uh, maybe more like an SUV version, or almost like a Volkswagen Golf style. All right, I see BMW and Ford, so I'm gonna walk us over to BMW and Ford. I think Great Wall Motors is going to be too chaotic right now. There's a ridiculous number of people over there checking that out. I don't know what's, they have, Hyundai has these cars in blue. I don't know if these are supposed to be special. Elantra, something else. I have one car that looks really cool. We'll have to go check out. This is the Ionic 5N. This is the Ionic 5N. For some reason, these cars are in blue, and I don't know why. Elantra NI, I don't know what Elantra N stands for. And then they have this car up front, RN22E. I'm guessing this is some sort of the Ionic 6. It's pretty cool. 
All right, so we're heading over to BMW since that's closer, and then we'll just a uh, really quick pop back. So far, what I'm seeing is gas cars. Let's see if we can find any electric. I know BMW has an electric line. A lot of people here. Uh, we'll take a look around a little bit. The iX. BMW iX Drive Sport. BMW E-Drive Technology. 523 horsepower, 385 kilowatt. Claimed range of 620 to 630 kilometers, depending on the method they're using. That's not EPA. 111 kilowatt hour battery pack. Top speed 200 kilometers per hour, which is, I don't know, 125. And price starts at 6.4 million baht. Don't ask me to translate baht to dollars at this moment. Uh, cruise around a little bit. The X-Drive 30E, is that EV? I'm not going to be able to work with that. Uh, this is a gas engine. So we'll look around and see if we can find other EVs. Uh, touring. Hello, how are you? Uh, I'm doing fine. I'm Warren Redlick. I'm a YouTuber. We're live with uh, a whole 45 people watching for now. Um, are there? I saw one electric vehicle so far. Are there yes, other sir. EVs that you guys are featuring that I should take a look at? I think we have. We just launched the iX2, which is over there. Okay. The first is there. So okay. I think later you can come check it out. Okay. Yeah. It's a four I, I, I am press. Oh yes. Yeah. You can so just... Which one? The blue one? Yes, sir. In okay. the middle. Okay. Thank you. So. This apparently is something they just introduced. I, I got here late for the, uh, the presentation, but this is apparently some new electric vehicle that they've introduced. And I don't have details yet. I'm sure if you look in the media, there'll be some report on the details of the BMW iX2. Okay. All right, we'll go check out Ford next. So right now, Great Wall Motors is talking about their hybrid electric vehicle, the Haval. I think they have a full EV version of it also. Haval Jolson H uh, HEV. BMW guy was that helpful, but that's fine. So let's see if we can get over to... I feel like I'm in the way. What's this? Is this a BMW electric? This is an electric. So this is a BMW i5. 4.6 million baht. I think the Model 3 is like 1.7 million baht or something like that. So this is like three times the price of a Model 3, if I've got my numbers right. So you've got 340 horsepower, 2 582 kilometers, 84 kilowatt hour pack, which is similar to a long range Model 3, but range is probably underperforming because they're not as efficient as a Tesla. Top speed 193 kilometers per hour. Uh, yeah, it looks good. Oh, this is an M version. So I gotta say, you got an M Sport with only 250 kilowatts, 340 horsepower. Not impressive. Great Wall Motors going a little crazy there. Oh, wait, sorry, this is the BMW i7. Okay, I'm, I, I, I gotta say that looks good. This is large. This is like the BMW luxury. This is like bigger than a Model S significantly, I think. So we've still not a lot of power. 400 kilowatts, 544 horsepower, 105 kilowatt hour pack, which is about the size of a Model S pack. Range of 625 kilometers. I think when you take those ranges and you translate them down and, and 8 million baht, again, I think a Model 3 in Thailand starts around 1.5 or 1.7 million baht. So this is a very, very expensive, and, model, and that translates to around $50,000 for a Model 3. BYD uh, Seal, I think, is also around the same price as the Model 3 in a similar vehicle, but not quite as efficient. So very expensive, but this is like super luxury car. And it's cool to see BMW doing that. Having fun. Okay. So I think we're done with BMW. So 
So Ford, I don't think Ford is going to be featuring any EVs. Ford is um, the, has the number five vehicle in Thailand, the, uh, the Ford Ranger. Pickups are very big sellers in Thailand. I'm just, I, I think I'm going to, you guys, I don't know how much you guys can hear me, so I'm just going to wander around a bit. So Ford is selling large SUVs. These are, again, these are Ranger class Fords. These are not F-150 class. I'm kind of surprised I don't see a Ford Ranger on the display because Ford Ranger is the number five selling vehicle in Thailand. And just to give you a taste again, this is what happens at an auto show. You've got a presentation by, in this case, Great Wall Motors. <clears throat> you can see a lot of media paying attention. I, I would say almost all the media is Asian media, and maybe it's all Thai, I'm not sure. Kind of cool to see it from the Basically impossible to get a good view from the front right now. I'm guessing Great Wall Motors is introducing a pickup truck, which I don't think they were known for before. Pickup trucks, again, are huge in the Thai market. So, P-O-E-R Sahar. Sahar Sahar. I don't know how to pronounce that or whatever, but it's kind of cool. You can see, actually, he's reading off a... Uh, he's got a teleprompter. So, yeah, anyway, this is a hybrid electric vehicle. You can see the HEV means it's a hybrid. So, Great, Great Wall does some uh, tr pure electric vehicles and some hybrid electric vehicles. Chinese company, but they are manufacturers. a partial hybrid electric vehicle here. Um, I think the Aura Cat is a full-on EV. So what do we want to see next? What do you all want to see next at the auto show? Let me know what you want to see. I'm, I'm going to wander around and look. Oh, they've got like a camping setup. They've got a camping setup on the pickup. So this is a hybrid pickup. I think HEV stands for hybrid. I think HEV stands for hybrid. We've got kind of a camping setup here. We'll set up your chairs and stuff. I guess this is the thing that they're featuring right now in Thailand. I'm guessing they don't have a full EV version of it, but I don't know yet. So again, if you don't know, Thailand is the number two market in the world for uh, pickup trucks after the United States. Bigger market than Canada, bigger market than Australia, uh, predominantly um, uh, the Thai market and the Australian, Australian market as well are dominated by Ranger size pickups rather than F-150 size pickups. So let's, we're gonna, I think I'm going to head over here and see. Oh, lost you guys there for a second. <laughs> yeah, but rent, yeah, it's cheap to stay in. I don't know that there's that much of an advantage to being able to stay in your pickup. It's really cheap. I, I stayed in a hotel in Bangkok for $14 a night, including breakfast. So I'm not sure how much of an advantage that is. So there's, there's a mini. See if they have an electric mini here. We've got more Hyundai here, but again, I don't see. I think that's like an internal company presentation. I'm looking to see, isn't there, a, I thought there was an electric mini, but I'm not seeing it so far. Well, if they have an electric, they're certainly not featuring it out front. So, all right, we'll skip past, uh, all right, we'll skip past uh, mini here. Um, I don't think, I think the, the Thai guy who's presenting it, uh, you can see what they've got. The Zeker 007, seventh kind of a cool name. I wonder if they're going to be in a Bond movie. So I don't see any specs on the vehicle, but. Let's 
Zeker 007 or 007. Oh, that's crazy. Zeker X. It's like a small SUV. Let's see if we can look inside this one. Oh, I guess we can't get into this one. Yeah. Oh, and this has got the steering wheel on the left-hand side, which is for the Chinese market and the U.S. market, but not really appropriate for the Thai market. It's kind of surprising that they did that. But the Zeker X. And then I guess this is the Zeker 009, so they've got sort of like a minivan-ish vehicle. That does not look super aerodynamic, if you ask me, but what do I know? And again, drivers steering wheel on the wrong side. Uh, Zeker X again. And the show vehicles and popped up to help me, which is kind of funny too. Audi's over here. I think we looked at Audi already, so I'm going to keep moving. I don't think we looked at Kia, but Kia is not that much different from Hyundai, so I don't know if it's worth going to see Kia. Uh, I see Volvo up ahead, Mitsubishi. I think Volvo has some electric vehicles. I don't know if Mitsubishi has anything electric going on. So why don't we stroll over to, and Mazda, I see, sorry, I see Mazda in the background, Kia in the background. Uh, Mitsubishi's right here. Again, I don't think Mitsubishi is known for electric vehicles. They bring out a ton of company employees at this event. It's like there's more employees for the event than there are people. You know, I think this is one of the reasons Tesla doesn't participate in these auto shows. Is like there's nothing, there's no advantage to be here for Tesla. Um, you now Nissan is here. Uh, you can see this is a HEV, so that's, I believe, a hybrid electric vehicle. Nissan is here. Again, pickups are huge in Thailand. But I want to see, there's, a, there's an EV from Nissan. Nissan has an EV called the Aria that's been getting some attention. It's their replacement for the Nissan Leaf, which was one of the early innovators in EVs. So we'll see if we can find an Aria here. So far, I'm not seeing it. Almera, Terra, and I see a, oh, there's a, you can see there's a, a Volvo plugged into a charger here, so we'll, we'll hit that in a minute. I want to see if we can find a Nissan Aria, because that's, I think that's still a pretty significant vehicle. It's probably one of Japan's best EVs. So this one says Kix e-power. I don't know if that means it's a full EV or if it's a hybrid. having some video issues I can't get this to Mom, Nissan kicks e-power uh, that's Thai language I don't know how to interpret that kicks e-power again what's the... I guess this is Nissan's pitch let's go to the front here maybe we can get it I think it's a com I think this is hybrid because there's what looks like a gas engine here and then an electric uh, inverter and electric motor. So this is not a full EV and I'm guessing this is a small battery pack. You can see it's a much smaller battery pack than typical. Um, Almira kicks. Is there an Aria? I can't believe they don't have an Aria on display. Did they give up on the Aria? That is pretty disappointing from Nissan. So we got Mazda over here. I don't think Mazda's got any significant EVs. Uh, we've got coming over to Volvo. C40. So Volvo C40. It says recharge twin. What does that mean? Is this a full-on EV? I'm not sure. Pure electric twin motor. Here we go. So this is the Volvo C40, pure electric twin motor, 2.79 million baht. Again, this is not twice the price of a Model 3, but significantly more than a Model 3. Uh, not a lot of details on the specs there. 
Let's see some gas cars. EX30, what is that? Pure electric, ultra single motor extended range. This is Volvo again. That's about the price of a Model 3, 1.79 million Thai bot. I'm going on memory of the price of Model 3. Again, I'm not seeing a lot of specs. Let's see if we can get a look inside. Oh, we can look inside. So it's got the vertical screen. I am not trying to score chicks at the auto show. Thank you for the thought though. No, the time market, EVs are definitely growing here. I definitely think EVs are growing here. I'm seeing progress on EVs. I'm seeing more and more Teslas. I saw an absolutely gorgeous Tesla the other day. I think this is just a regular, this is a plug-in hybrid. What was the one I saw? I think this is the same car. And there's some girl showing off on it or whatever. I don't know if she's an auto journalist or a model or what the story is there, but let's go back. We're going to head back and see that charging spot. Another EX30. I guess this is the lower priced one. This is less than a Model 3 at 1.6 million baht. Again, no specs. EX30, you guys can look it up, I guess. And this is the higher priced version. This has a dual motor. Free one-year car insurance. Wow. Fully electric, up to 540 kilometers range, zero to 60, zero to 100 kilometers in 3.6 seconds, which is pretty, that's zero to 62 miles an hour. That's pretty good. Small carbon footprint, it's pretty interesting. I, I, you gotta appreciate Volvo for doing stuff. I think Volvo's been relatively good. I think Volvo's been relatively good on the electric front compared to a lot of other car makers. So they've got one on display here, the XC40 that is plugged into a charger. So is this just a hybrid or is this a full on EV? It says recharge twin. I think this is a dual motor. Um, it's true, it is warm weather. It's not, they don't have cold weather days in Thailand. It's hot 370 days a year here. So this appears to be a full electric Pure electric twin motor, 2.7 million baht. That's not that pricey. I mean, it's certainly more expensive than a Model 3, but not bad. So, all right, we're done Volvo. Let's go check out Porsche. All right, what do we got? What do we got? Come on. Okay. So coming up next, we've got Porsche. But before we get to Porsche, what do we got here? The Bentley. Oh, we got Bentley. All right, we'll, we'll pass by Bentley quickly. It's like Bentley has got something they want to show off later. I don't think Bentley is known for their EVs. They're just known for being outrageously expensive. I do know a guy who has a Bentley. Uh, he is a billionaire, mostly drives his Hyundai. Keeps the Bentley parked in the driveway. We got Mercedes over here. We'll come to Mercedes in a little bit. Uh, you know, Bentley known for, oh, it's got, they got hybrid. The Flying Spur Hybrid, okay, but here we come up on Porsche. Well, I've got to admit, I have a thing for Porsche. Gabe, if you're watching, I love you, man. Uh, Porsche Cayenne E Hybrids, so not a full-on electric. Uh, Macan, I think this is the gas Macan. I don't think they've got electric Macan yet. Yeah, that's still gas. I believe Porsche look, I love the Porsche feel. I got a ride in a Taycan. Let's see if they have a Taycan here. E hybrid Taycan. So this is like the uh, like wagon version of the Taycan. What do we got here? Taycan Cross Turismo. 350 kilowatts on the low end, 500 kilowatts on the high end. High top speed, 93 kilowatt hour battery pack. Not a lot of range, but it's badass looking, if you ask me. And then I think this is the Taycan. Is this a Taycan? Yeah, this is the Taycan. And uh, we've got, I think it's similar, 240 kilowatts, 320 kilowatts for the 4S version. Top speed, 250 kilometers per hour for the high end, four seconds, zero to 60, which is, you know, for, for those of us who are Tesla 
plaid nerds, not that fast, but not bad. Still really appreciate Porsche for making an effort and doing a pretty good job in the area. I don't think Suzuki is known for its EVs. Isuzu is the number one pickup seller in the Thai market. The Isuzu, um, what's it called, D-Max? Hello, Swati Kap. Swati Kap. Sabai di mai? Sabai di. So the D-Max, um, I don't know if you guys can tell from looking on the phone, this is a smaller, pickup than an F-150. Uh, but this is the number one selling vehicle in Thailand. The number two is the Toyota Hilux, which is another pickup similar size. And Range Ford Ranger is number five. So these are, I don't, I don't think Isuzu is known for any EVs. I just wanted to show you really quick. Um, there, I think there is a market for some kind of Tesla pickup truck. They sell something like 800,000 pickups in Thailand alone. I think if you add in Malaysia and Indonesia, and maybe a, a couple other countries I think you might get to Sawati Cup. I, th and, uh, I think if you add in Malaysia, Indonesia, a couple other countries, you might get to states is like three. So we've got BYD. I'm stoked to see BYD here. I've been seeing a lot of BYDs out in the wild. The BYD seal, if you ask me, this is intended to look like a Model 3. Um, the funny thing is the headlights, they had these headlights before Tesla Model 3. So it's almost like Tesla copied their headlights, but Tesla had the shape. You guys tell me whether you think this is comparable to the Model 3 in terms of look. You know, this looks like the Model 3. But anyway, that's, that's a, uh, I think they don't really push this car that much when I look in, in, high, in Thailand. They push, not the Dolphin, they're pushing the Atto 3, which is over here, this white one, which we'll get to. The Dolphin, I had a ride in a Grab. Grab is like Uber. And the ride was in the, the Dolphin, and the driver was telling me he wants to get an Atto 3. So, so BYD Seal, this is probably an easier one to see. They've got their charger set up. Um... Let's see if we can get a look inside. Right hand drive. There we go. I gotta admit, like I think this is priced similarly to the Model 3. You know, I give BYD a lot of credit. I think they're doing pretty good work. I, I think that um, you know, Tesla fans tend to shit on BYD a little bit, say, oh, they're not as good as Tesla. And you're right, they're not as good as Tesla, but they might be the next best uh, EV maker out there. And they're certainly producing a high volume of vehicles. And they are a Tesla partner. They make battery packs for Tesla. They have some fairly uh, interesting innovation um, with uh, the BYD Blade battery pack. They are doing, you know, lithium iron phosphate batteries, I think entirely. So this is the Atto 3. This is the vehicle they have been pushing. Uh, I think if you go to the BYD website in Thailand, this, <laughs> I like haven't been able to find their other vehicles. The only ones I've been able to find are the, B B the BYD Atto 3. So we'll take a look around this one. This is their, I would say this is smaller than a Model Y. It looks and feels smaller than a Model Y. I don't think there's even conceivably room for a third row. Build Your Dreams. I don't think they actually, I think they added Build Your Dreams as a name after they got a lot of attention. Um, dolphin here. But well, let's come back to the Atto 3 and we'll see if we can take a look inside. So this is the interior. You can see you've got a screen right over the steering wheel. You've got another screen here. Um, I don't know, it looks pretty. It feels small in the front and I think they've got the seats pulled forward to make the rear look bigger. I think if you are a, an Uber or Grab driver, I want to get this to brighten up. I'm using my Android phone because my iPhone doesn't have good connectivity here. So, BMW Atto 3 is the vehicle that BM, BM, B, BYD Atto 3, sorry, is the vehicle that uh, BYD is pushing in the Thai market. And by the way, turn impossible into late t shirts. Turn Impossible in the late t-shirt. ElonBits.com for the t-shirts. 
So, yeah, I think a pretty impressive and, and a fairly central spot. It looks like BYD spent a lot of money to get like a central premium location uh, featuring their vehicles. And they are advertising a lot here as well. All right, so let's go to Mercedes. We're going to head over to Mercedes now. Uh, plug-in hybrid. Let's see. We've got a Mercedes plug-in hybrid. We've got the CLS. I think that's a gas plug-in hybrid. What do we have back here? Where do we find the, uh, the EV Mercedes? Again, you can see that not... They're not giving the EV versions premium floor space, which is a little disappointing, but I guess not surprising. I don't think Mercedes is killing it with EVs here. Oh, there's some really hot car here. What is this? What the hell is this? All right. I don't think this is as cool as the flying car, but Vision 111. Yikes. And this is this is the classic example, you know, where the, they make some insane prototype that will never make it on the road. But that is pretty right there. GLC Coupe. It's a, not a coupe, it's a coupe. Some guy speaking to an audience. Uh, press. God, it's really scary. I'm starting to understand a little tie. It's getting worrisome. Where's the EVs? AMG SL. It's pretty, but it's gas. That looks like it might be an EV over here. I think we found the EV. Oh, thank you, Digital Blade CA. This is the EQS. So this is the Mercedes leading electric vehicle. The EQS 450 plus rear wheel drive 265 kilowatts which is not very powerful zero to 60 zero to 100 kilometers in 6.1 seconds so zero to 60 in about six seconds 108 kilowatt hour pack six million baht again this is it's three four times the price of a model three uh eqe over here i think this is another electric oh amg version all right i admit i'm a little bit of a nerd for mercedes too I love the Germans. I want to see the Germans do well. Of course, the best German EV maker is Tesla. We all know that. AMG EQE 53 4Matic. Uh, dual motors on front and rear axle. 460 kilowatts, which is a little better. 3.5 seconds, 0 to 100 kilometers per hour. Uh, 170 kilowatt DC charging. Come on, you got to do better than that. So again, six million baht. That's uh, three, four times the price of a Model Three. That's the AMG version, though. This is the non-AMG version. So AMG is the sport version. That's the regular. This is the SUV version. Let's take a look at that. This is in also an EV. Um, dual motor, front and rear axle, 215 kilowatts, which is 292 horsepower. That's pretty lame. I mean, you know, if, if, compared to Tesla. Um, zero to 60 and uh, zero to 100 kilometers in 6.6 6 seconds. Range 459 to 558 kilowatts. Uh, well, yeah, by the way, you're not seeing a lot of attention over here right now on the Mercedes section. I think that's because there's another section that's got a lot more attention just because there's there's events happening elsewhere. 4.85 million bot that is two and a half times the price of Model 3. And is this an EV also? Yeah, we've got an E350. I don't think I've seen an E350 before. So. Looks good. <clears throat> I don't see any details on this one. But the E350. All right. So. Somebody's filming something, so I don't want to get in their way. <clears throat> I think I'm always going to get in people's way no matter what I do. But <laughs> that's who I am, right? Depal. What is Depal? Okay, this is something I haven't seen before. Never even heard of it. Depal S07. I'm guessing this is all electric because I've never heard of it. And wow. Thailand? No. Who is this? Depal S07. If anybody wants to look this up, I've never heard of this car. The Depal S07. I see cameras. 
I think I see cameras. I have no familiarity at all with this. What the hell is this? Looks like they have an event coming up. I don't know what time. Deepak Chang'an. Chang'an Motors. I got nothing. I got nothing. No, no idea what this is about. I'm not even sure I'm supposed to be walking here. <laughs> Chang'an. Is this a Chinese company? Deepal L07. They've got EV chargers in the background, so these are full EVs. Let's take a look inside. All right. I mean, you know, you got the same thing here with the underneath the underneath the console, the open space. Okay. Netta, this is a car that I'm seeing on the road a lot. This is this is an EV I'm seeing a lot. What am I missing over there? So, Netta, I, I actually see a, a number of these on Thai roads. So let's let's take a closer look at the Netta. Netta V2, Netta V2. It's a small. I don't know if you want to call this an SUV. Small vehicle. This is significantly, this is, you know, ballpark Corolla size, but maybe a little higher up. You know, Honda CRV, HRV size. Maybe it's probably smaller than a Honda CRV. But I see these on the road a lot. I think they're very popular. I suspect that they're inexpensive. I think this is a Chinese company. Oh, let's see if we can open the hatch. I don't know how to open the hatch. But, uh, like I said, I see a lot of these on the roads um, here in Thailand. So this is a company that's making a difference. They're bringing EVs to the world, replacing gas cars with EVs. That's a big positive, if you ask me. So. Are we having fun yet? Hungry for beef lo mein. Chang'an is a Chinese state-owned auto manufacturer, hydrogen, and Chongqing. Oh. Yeah. Losing signal. I think this is more of the D. Oh, they have an SUV version I don't think I saw before. Okay. So. I don't know what Firebright is. I think this is like a supplier rather than an actual car maker, but I'm not sure. Firebright proprietary battery technology, easy EV total solution. It looks more like they're pumping their some kind of EV battery solution or some sort of technology for, as a supplier. So I'm going to keep walking around. I appreciate y'all staying with me. We have a light vehicle coming up that we'll take a look at quick. That looks kind of, I mean, it's tiny. This is tiny. I don't know if you guys can get a sense of how small this thing is. Uh, it's not a pod car size, but this this might be smaller than a Mini. Uh, I will say it's cute. It's rounded. Lumen? Chang'an Lumen. Uh... That is like really cute. I gotta give him credit, this is really cute. Looks tiny, I think it's only got two seats. Does it have, is there, I don't know if there's rear seats in this thing. Can't tell, I think those seats are folded down, so there are rear seats. But this thing is like super tiny. And then we've got, this looks like some high-end CD701. And again, we're at Chang'an Motors. A Chinese uh, EV maker. Pretty impressive display. Now we've got GAC and Ion. I think these are also EVs. And I see I see another Tesla Model 3 clone. Uh, the gray one. And uh, occasionally they have attractive women involved. 
They occasionally have a track when we've been involved in auto shows. I know we're all upset about that. Hyper SSR. Uh, but yeah, check out this Hyper. Just tell me this doesn't look like a Model 3. Swati Cop. The rear does not look like a Model 3. But the front end looks like a super Model 3 look. Hyper GT. So I'm guessing this is an Ion. A I O N. Um, you guys know me. I like the rear end. <laughs> uh, what's this baby? The Ion, Ion Y Plus. This is probably the more practical vehicle. Uh, okay, it's in Thai, so I can't read it. I'm screwed. I can I, I can guess, but I don't really know what that is. But it looks kind of cool. Uh, cool to see, you know, efficient EVs. Ion Y Plus. Ion Y Plus. GAC Motors. Thank you, Digital Blade CA, for joining. So, yeah, all the stuff's in Thai. I don't blame them. We're in Thailand, after all. Let's look inside. So this is, it feels significantly smaller than a Model Y, but I can't say for sure. There's definitely no room for a third row in the back. Um, looks like a lot of legroom in the rear, but I think they pushed the front seats forward. And you know, there's just only a tiny bit of space back there, so you couldn't put a third row in. So it's smaller than that. And... But they do have the pretty girls lined up. You gotta give them credit for the pretty girls. And they got EVs. We gotta give them credit for the EVs. We got Honda here. Now Honda, I don't think, somebody tell me if I'm wrong, but I don't think Honda has a significant EV. Losing signal, we're having, we're having tough connectivity moments. Uh, we did Meta, we did Bipal. What do we got? Oh, VinFast. VinFast is a Vietnamese manufacturer. I was in um, Da Nang, Vietnam not that long ago and we saw quite a few vinfast vehicles my impression is that on the business end this company is struggling but they have some pretty girls and some pretty cars so the vf7 i'm trying to remember what the vehicle was we saw a lot of that was used as like a grab vehicle um vf7 vf6 vf8 I'm not seeing a lot of details on these cars. Let's take a look and see. VF8 specs. Okay, we got specs in English. That's good. Uh, 300 kilowatts. 20 inch wheels. Charging time doesn't, we're not getting a lot of specs here. Like what are the, what's the charge? It doesn't say how big the battery pack is. Oh, this is cool. Oh, okay, VinFast, I'm giving you credit for this one, baby. This is this is lit. Cybertruck, Vinfast is coming for you. I don't think they're going to succeed, but they're coming for Cybertruck. This is pretty hot. Vinfast, electric EV. Let's see if we can find out some details on this baby. Electric EV pickup. This looks. I'm sorry. This is just cool. This is really nice looking. So look up the the Vinfast Wild. See if you can get more details on that. I, I don't see any details here, but I'm impressed. What do we got here? VF5? I don't think I saw this when I was in Vietnam. I'm trying to remember which vehicles I saw when I was in Vietnam. This is like a smaller vehicle. Curb weight, 1,285 kilograms. Poor cop. The FP34. What have we got? I think this is this is VFE34. Is that different? Only 110 kilowatts. That's pretty low power. Um, 
no indication on the size of the battery pack here. And what's this cute little thing? Oh my god, that's adorable. VF3, VinFast VF3, that is the cutest. I don't know if it's the cutest one I've seen, but that's pretty cute. Hello, Sawati Cup. Alright, so Honda, again, I don't think Honda does a lot of EVs. Honda actually has a large display. This is striking. So one of the other things that really stands out about Thailand is the volume of scooters and motorcycles that you see here, especially scooters. And Honda makes a lot of motorcycles and scooters. I'm not sure if Honda's doing any EV versions. That would be a nice thing. There are, There is like... A, maybe they're showing off an EV. I doubt it. But... All right. They may not be very fashion uh, tech forward on EV, but the pretty girls. So we've got Triumph, Royal Enfield. This seems like it's more of like a supplier end of things. So am I missing something? MZ Speed, is that? That looks like Volkswagen. I see Volkswagen. I think these are supplier. I'm on the supplier end now that I've gotten past uh, Honda. So. I think that's enough for today. I want to thank everybody for watching. Um, really enjoying this show, and uh, I'm probably going to start doing some live streams from my X account, WR4NYGov. Um, yeah, th thanks everybody so much for watching. We'll talk soon. Bye bye.